this was basically fiber is what these people were eating. Now, as you know, fiber breaks down in the enteric system only under the influence of bacteria that basically break it down a little bit. And what they produce for us is short chain fatty acids, not carbohydrates. Okay. So basically the human diet for 350,000 years up to the point where the agrarian revolution kicked in about 8,000 years ago, human beings ate a diet which to all intents and purposes was 100% protein and fat, given that the fiber broke down to short chain fatty acids and not carbohydrates. There was no carbohydrate in the human diet at all. None. Zero. What about when they say that there was like berries around? Okay, two weeks a year, yes, two, two or three weeks a year, seasonally for some human beings, there were berries around. Um, I'm talking across the, the vast majority of the year, the other 50 weeks of the year or so, give or take, no carbohydrates at all, zero. So good, thanks. Great correction there. Absolutely right. It's important that people understand that these two angles are two aspects of looking at the same thing. This is not an either or situation. A lot of people, because I, sh I show two diagrams and I talk about one diagram, this one being where glucose is the predominant fuel source in the body and the other one where fats are the predominant fuel source in the body. And people then go away sometimes with the idea that either or situation prevails. No, both these two charts that I'm going to show you are both in effect at all times simultaneously i hope that's clear this is a this is a this and that not this or that situation and that's very very important to understand okay so what are we looking at here at the top of this image we're looking at a blue area there where it says glucose and lcfa which stands for long chain fatty acids that blue space is the extracellular fluids outside of the cell in this case it's the blood the extracellular fluid it's that series of compartments of fluids um, in the body in other words outside the cell membrane outside of the of the working cell then we have a tan colored area or the middle section there where most of the action appears to be that is the cell fluid the cell cytosol inside the fluid but outside of the mitochondria so if you remember, mitochondria are the powerhouses of the cell. The mitochondria is where you generate most of your ATP for your cellular work, your, your the, the, the roles that cells do. Mitochondria, basically, the reaction factories where we, we, we react oxygen with hydrogen to re grossly oversimplify the thing. And thus we make water and release a bunch of chemical energy in so doing because that's exothermic and that energy is encapsulated to a large degree to make ATP, which is our cellular energy currency, if you like to think of it that way. All right, so that's the tan area in the middle and the green area is inside the mitochondria, the workings inside the mitochondria where all that energy, all that ATP is created. All right. This is the situation where a person has been consuming a diet which is rich in carbohydrates. Now, let me define rich in carbohydrates for you right up front so that you know what I mean by rich in carbohydrates. You have a requirement in your body because of your brain's total dependence really upon glucose to survive and also because every muscle cell in your body requires glucose to be able to function. A really active human being, not a completely sedentary human being, or not an athlete, but sort of somewhere middle of the road sort of person who is active, typically to maybe 300 grams of carbohydrates per day is the requirement for life. Okay. Luckily, the human body has a system to generate that two to 300 grams of carbohydrate itself. And it generates that from non-carbohydrate precursors. For example, the glycerol backbones of fatty acid molecules, lactate, which comes from pyruvate, as you can see at the bottom of the screen there. And there are a number of what's called what are called gluconeogenic amino acid precursors as well. So basically what I'm telling you is you are capable, your body has all the enzymes to make 
sugar to make glucose from glycerol out of out of fat molecules from monocarboxylates such as pyruvate lactate that sort of stuff and also from some of the proteins that you consume that's what's kept us alive for 350,000 years while there was basically zero carbohydrates available except for maybe a couple of weeks during the year when the berries were ripe anything over and above that is toxic so does that mean that you have the ability to eat 300, 200, 200 or 300 grams of carbohydrates and get away with it a day? No, because gluconeogenesis doesn't stop. It's, it's going to keep happening because your body is so attuned to making glucose every day because it's, that's how your genes are designed. That's what it's supposed to do. You're not supposed to eat any carbohydrates at all. 